Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV, where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Adventures in Bread Baking. I'm Beth, and I'm joined by Katie and Elizabeth to tell us about the recipes. So, Katie, let's hear what you did for bread baking. Sure. Um, I will be the first to admit that I took the easy way out on this, and I went for a quick sweet bread um, for my adventure, but I have been wanting to make this recipe for a really long time. It is for Dutch brown bread, and it is by my great-grandmother, Eva Riddall, and I actually have the recipe written in her handwriting, so it's very special. Um, this is a recipe that has been passed down from my family. She made it, I called her my granny, so I called it granny bread when I was little, and then my grandmother made it. Um, I think my mom made it a couple of times, but I'd never made it before this time. And so I was excited to give it a try um, and see if it brought back some memories. Um, so it's really, really simple. You just um, mix together uh, two cups of white sugar, a cup of brown sugar, a cup of canola oil. And then this is funny, it's two cups of milk with mixed with two tablespoons of vinegar, which is buttermilk. So, you know, you could use buttermilk, but my granny obviously just always had milk and vinegar like me in the house and not buttermilk. So that's how she wrote the recipe. You mix together your wet ingredients and then you mix together your dry ingredients, which are flour, baking soda, salt, nutmeg, cinnamon, and cloves, which I only have like the full, like the big cloves. And I definitely knew that that wasn't what was in the bread that I grew up with. So I put it in the spice grinder and ground the clove. Um, and then you, so once you've got your dry ingredients mixed, you just gradually pour in your wet ingredients to the dry until it's combined. Um, grease up some loaf pans. So this recipe makes two loaves. For my first time making this, I just made one loaf because I was like, I don't know, a little bit nervous that I was going to somehow screw it up. And also that's a lot of bread. So um, you so you grease your two loaf pans, pour it in there, and then you just bake them for an hour at 350. It uh, makes the house smell amazing. And um, it came out looking great. I've got a picture of it right out of the oven. I served it also for Thanksgiving. And so I put it on a nice looking platter, looked and tasted just like I remember as a kid. I did used to slather like a good hefty amount of butter on it when I was little, which is still good, but it's also good plain. One thing that I wanted to mention about this was I did some Googling um, to try and see if I could find like another recipe for, we called it, my gram, gram, great grandmother called it Dutch brown bread. So I was like looking to see, well, is is that out there? Is that a thing? And I just found savory breads. And then when I was Googling like sweet brown bread, I found a lot of recipes for like the Outback Steakhouse brown bread, which is just like a savory bread that's slightly sweet. So I wasn't able to find anything else out there. So I do wonder if this was original or not. I'm going to try and find out through my family, but it was a joy to make this and I'm gonna make more of it my um my granny made like so many loaves of this for Christmas and she would just hand it out to like everybody she encountered so I'm planning on doing the same thing to carry on that tradition well, that's, that's awesome nice. yeah. yeah is it like did you have it for dessert or something okay well I have it for for mainly and when I was growing up I ate it for breakfast yeah so it was like a breakfast bread but yeah if I'm serving it with dinner I'll have it with, for dessert or um I'll just eat it whenever for a snack too okay 
I, I'm so happy that it tasted the way you remembered because I feel like so often when we, I guess you did have the exact recipe, but so often when we try to recreate recipes, it's like, oh, that's not quite right. They must have done something different, but we don't know. So I think it's great that it was just like brought back memories. Yep, it was very cool. Really fun to do. Um, Elizabeth, <laughs> tell us about your adventure in bread baking, please. Okay, so I feel silly because for some reason, I didn't think of like a sweet bread or like a banana bread or anything like that, which I totally could have done um, because that I can do that. But instead in my head, I kept thinking like, oh my gosh, I have to make a sourdough like loaf or something, which I like don't want to do. I don't, I'm just not interested in that kind of thing. Even during the pandemic, I did not get into that. I don't eat a lot of like, just like bread so I I just felt like I was like what am I gonna do with this if I like bake this so I was like oh my gosh what am I gonna do so I was racking my brain um and I always like to like mention on occasion for listeners like you know we like make this stuff and it's like for us and our families it's not like we so like we go buy the ingredients and do it so I never want to make something that it's like I'm not gonna eat because that's just kind of wasteful so anyway so I was thinking so Anyway, I also went a sort of easy route in this and I made pizza dough. Um, this is a recipe that I have used for years that is like pretty much foolproof for me. I have no idea where I got it. I think I kind of have made it up over the years based on like different things. It's extremely simple, but basically you take three and a half cups of flour, one packet of yeast, and one and a half cups of water. And then you mix it all up and you knead it until it's nice and smooth. And then you basically cover it and let it sit until it's doubled in size. Um, so that takes 45 minutes. It's really pretty quick, maybe a little longer if it's cold out, but super easy. You can use it right away or you can refrigerate it for a couple of days. Um, I use this right away. It makes two kind of decent sized pizzas. I have a photo here of the two pizzas that I made with it recently. Um, it's really foolproof um, and so easy. The only time I did have trouble making this is during the pandemic when I couldn't find yeast anywhere because everyone was <laughs> indeed making bread. Um, but I, um, you know, I think store-bought pizza dough is just fine, but it's so easy to, when you have all this stuff at home to just throw it together. And even for someone like me, who's daunted by like letting things rise and all that kind of stuff, it really works. And, um, you know, I haven't done this, but you could probably do some, add some stuff in and make like flavored crust. My mom has done that with this recipe, adding some herbs in or whatever, it all works. Um, so that's what I did a little bit of a shortcut, but that's what worked for me for bread baking. Um, and of course I forgot about sweet breads that would have been more exciting, <laughs> but that's what I did. No, pizza's awesome. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry about pizza ever. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, really oh, hungry pizza pizza. is just like the best to me I think it's like so beyond pizza that you can get anywhere else and I was wondering have you ever tried grilling it no I'm sure that would work that sounds fabulous and yeah. I I would in the summer I just um I haven't but yum yeah yeah give it a shot that's my favorite thing to do with homemade pizza dough mm. Mm, it's just tasty well I also wanted to ask what you put on your pizza Mm -hmm. So I have one, um, that I kind of did, um, I did one like for my husband because he likes, um, Hawaiian pizza. I did not do ham, but I did like a pineapple red onion kind of like situation with some balsamic and whatever. And then I did just kind of a margarita, which is my fave with some fresh tomatoes, fresh mozz, basil, red sauce, you know, um, but I've done all sorts of things. I've done veg, like, you know, it all works. So. Cool. Sounds great. Yeah, that's great. I, and super simple. Like I did share that remember, a while back, a Detroit style pizza. Yes. I, I feel like it was that. way more complicated. I don't know, but um, I will tell you about what I did because I'm becoming way more confident in my bread baking. Um, but I have to laugh at myself because I'm, I just looked up. Uh, so 
let, I'm going to try to make this succinct, but uh, back in June, I went to visit um, Charlevoix and I visited my cousin's uh, bakery, that French place. And um, so he, and I got to learn some things uh, from, from them and went in and like at six in the morning on, a, on vacation days and helped, you know, with, um, you know, just to learn. So anyway, it was great to see how people like the, it's okay to feel like you're you know trying to fix stuff like if you're making a mistake to do what you got to do to repair it or stick your hands in the mixer that's what I witnessed anyway so here's my point um I've gotten more confident and then they but they shared with me this coolish I have some in a jar a pool, P O O L I S H. Never had heard of it before that, and um, I only recently learned that it's a it's like a sourdough starter, but it's with um, commercial yeast. So they given me just a little bit, and I, I, I had it in the fridge. I mean, I don't need, really know what I'm doing, but I do add uh, flour to it. So anyway, I have been making, and they recommended my cousin Brian recommended this guy's. Um, book and so like I've had it out since June and it's now December um I'm probably ready to give it back but I made breadsticks um I've made a couple other things with this uh in this cookbook one was a, a small baguette and that was by far like the best thing I that I that really built my confidence and I did use a little bit of the poolish for that. So the breadsticks I thought would be fun for Thanksgiving with having little kiddos. And um, I, I wrote out the instruction. I mean, it's, it's the only difference with um, how, like one of the ingredients is olive oil uh, that you, but I, I don't think I need to get into all the, you know, the mixing it's, it's your basic stuff, uh, flour, yeast, water, uh, salt, um, you proof it, you know, uh, you, I uh, actually, you punch it down halfway through. And I did learn another thing from another baker. Um, what I did this time was I turned my oven on to 350 and then got it up to temp and then turned it off. And that's where I proof the dough, um, punched it down again, you know, just halfway through, and then the, this, I, and I wrote it all out. It's, it, was, it seemed like a complicated way of making breadsticks. Like it was, you'll have to see what I mean, but it was like taking two sets, two different rectangles, cutting them into strips of different sizes and then mix, twisting those two different sizes together. I found it very complicated and, um, I, it, even with pictures. And so I just rolled them out and I, and I also did it in two batches, which, um, so this first time, the first day I made it, and then I saved it for a couple of days, uh, before Thanksgiving. Um, so this is where my confidence started to build because I was like, I can do this. I can even put it in the fridge for a while and bring it back out. And, um, so that's what I did. And then, uh, this recipe said if you're going to put any toppings on it to like seeds um to roll that right before the last proof so i did use everything um spice you know uh it didn't stick very well to it but um i do have a picture of the very nicely styled uh breadsticks uh here and my friends can't see it yet, but um, it was, they were a hit. Uh, I personally didn't think they were that great. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it was okay. Maybe there's just so many other things to eat, but the kids, the toddlers, that's pretty much all they ate were breadsticks. That's all they wanted. So I was very pleased with that. Um, and one other thing about this guy's technique that he does is, um, and I think I would incorporate with other breads now is um when you you preheat your oven and you put in a, a empty pan to preheat and then just when you're putting the breadsticks or the bread in 
you pour a scant quarter cup of water into that hot pan so it steams it up a little. So um, so that was cool to know. And, you know, I'm just learning. I'm learning. And I also learned just before I got on here that I've been using the wrong yeast. He's, you know, when Baker's yeast is not the same kind of yeast that I have in my fridge, but guess what? It still worked. So sorry. Anyway, that was my adventure in bread baking and wonder if you have any thoughts. Well, I think it's great that you're becoming more confident and you're learning more new techniques. And that's really cool that you were able to help out at that bakery. So it sounds like a really good experience all around. It's wonderful. Um, oh, I should add too, I miss, I miss um, measured. I had like way too much flour in this. So again, that's where I was like, oh no, but I was able to come back from it and, you know, and add a little more water. And, and so, yeah, it's the more, the more, you know, I, I like that. Um, I've heard that bread baking is kind of a long-term endeavor like you kind of do experiment and get better and like learn new techniques so I think it's cool that you're you're embarking on that and um I mean breadsticks sound great I'm sorry the seeds didn't stick that would be like I feel like that's such a good part when you said everything seasoning I was like yeah, yeah I mean they they did enough they did but yeah. they weren't as there was a lot wasted on the on the pan but but anyway sure. yeah they did they did enough because there's a little garlic little yeah so yeah um, but I would, I would do it again. Cool. I, I will also try your, your pizza dough and your sweet bread too. That was a lot of sugar. Uh, just saying, um, <laughs> so, Hey, thank you for watching recipe share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadale.org to find the recipes we talked about and share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we'll be talking about, uh, uh, oh, we'll be rocking the crock pot. We look forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share. Recipe share. Share a little recipe with recipe.